Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I have some middle grade standalone recommendations for you. So books that are not a part of a series and just stand on their own. Originally I was going to do like a full video of everything combined together of a bunch of different standalones but I actually had so many and I thought it'd be fun to separate it into three different videos. Middle grade YA and adult. So today I have 11 middle grade standalone recommendations for you. I've read all of these and I'm excited to share them with you. So if you're looking for a middle grade where you just have a quick middle grade read that's not a part of a big series, then I have some good options for you today. The first couple I'm going to show you are ones that I don't physically have with me, so I'm just going to show you pictures on my Kindle so you can see the covers. So the first one I'm going to talk about is The Secret of Nightingale Wood by Lucy Strange. In this story, we are following this girl and her family who have recently moved to, I think, the British countryside. Her mother has recently lost a baby and is struggling with depression. And in these days, I think it takes place in the 1800s. And at the time, depression isn't really handled well. They didn't really know how to handle postpartum depression and things like that. And so this little girl is seeing her mother kind of do worse and worse and isn't really agreeing with what the doctor is having her do. Basically, is having her mother be in isolation. She's not allowed to see her mom. Her father is working outside of town and so he's never home. And the doctor's telling him all the things that he's doing for his wife, but this little girl is seeing her mother just get worse and worse instead of better and isn't agreeing with the fact that this doctor is making her have isolation. And we're just following this girl whose voice isn't able to be heard because she's a little girl. She's like 11, 12 years old. Nobody listens to her. They're like, you're just a kid. Just let the adults handle it. But she goes on this mission to basically save her mother and to convince her father that the type of medical treatment her mother get, is getting is wrong. It's heartwarming. It's beautiful. There's a little bit of magical realism in there. And I really adored this story. And I loved seeing this little girl do everything she could to protect her mother and for her mother to get better. I really loved this book a lot. I thought it was beautiful. It's got a gorgeous cover and a gorgeous story as well. So I highly recommend that one. Another book that is no surprise for me to recommend because it's one of my favorite middle grade authors is Mary Downing Hahn. And today I'm going to talk about One for Sorrow by Mary Downing Hahn. Um, ignore this little advanced reader copy thing. This, for some reason, this was the one picture I could find at the moment that would allow for me to pull up on my Kindle. Anyways, in this story, we are following this girl who is living during the influenza epidemic in the 1800s, and her frenemy at school has gotten sick and died from the influenza, which she hates to think this, but she's kind of relieved because this girl was really, really mean to her, even though she claims to be her friend. Unfortunately, this frenemy comes back as a ghost and haunts her, and it's so good. <laughs> it's really, really creepy. It takes place during the winter mostly, but I really enjoyed this story. This is a little bit longer of a ghost story that Mary Downing Hahn has written. A lot of times her stories are pretty short. This one's a little bit longer, and I really loved it because um, I love the fact that I think she she uh, learned from her, either her mother or her grandmother about her experience during the influenza and some of the things that she saw as a child living through that pandemic. So it may hit a little close to home for the situations currently. However, I really highly, like, re highly recommend this. I love middle grade ghost stories. So if you want kind of a creepy ghost story um, set during an interesting time in history, then I highly recommend this one as well. All right, let's jump to some stories that I actually have on hand with me. So this is one that I am intending to hopefully reread in the future and it's called The Curious Tale of the In-Between by Lauren Distefano. In this story, it's another little bit of a ghosty story. We're following this little girl here who is an orphan and she can actually see and interact with the dead. She's able to see ghosts and she ends up basically having a best friend that's a ghost. It kind of reminds, reminds me of the City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Just doesn't have that like TV show element to it. But in this one, she's able to see the living and the dead and she actually prefers communicating with the dead more until she meets a little boy who is also an orphan and has lost 
parent and they're both kind of looking for answers and decide to kind of go exploring and try to find out more about the afterlife. So this is a really sweet story. I really enjoyed it a lot. I love the friendship between this little girl and this ghost friend that she has and her communication with the dead. I think it's a lot of fun. And so if you want a little bit of a spooky and a heartwarming kind of ghost story for middle grade readers, then I highly recommend this one as well. And this cover, I just love it. I think it's so cool looking. Have fun. All right, this one is one that probably you have heard of before and it's recommended a lot, but there's a reason it's recommended a lot. It's because it's really good and I need to reread it at some point. And that is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. So in this one, we're following a little boy who's an orphan and I believe he is left or kind of wanders into a graveyard and he is raised by ghosts. So a little bit of a quirky upbringing, definitely. There's a lot of the story I don't remember. I think his parents were murdered and he is getting, I think he's being hunted down by the person that murdered his parents, but he ends up being raised in this graveyard and is friends with all these ghosts. It's this really kind of quirky story. If you happen to read Coraline by Neil Gaiman, you probably will really like this one as well. I've also heard that the audiobook is incredible. I believe Neil Gaiman actually um, narrates the audiobook. Uh, and I think there's another one where there's like a full cast with the music and everything. So I've heard it's really, really good. But this is a really great story to read if you want something that's kind of like quirky and kind of has this like Tim Burton-y feel, then this one is definitely for you. So I highly recommend this one. After that is another, I'm sorry, I feel like a lot of these are kind of spooky ghost story ones because I love middle grade ghost stories. But this one is dear to my heart. I absolutely adore it and I wish more people would read it. And that is The Night Gardener by Jonathan Ossier. I love Jonathan Ossier's books. He writes wonderful middle grades because he he writes these middle grade stories that kind of remind me of old fairy tales and kind of uh, old fables in that there's a lot of whimsicalness to his stories. However, there are shadows as well. So he kind of puts a lot of realistic things that people face in life, kind of difficult situations and difficult feelings, along with whimsical kind of like places as well and kind of situations as well. So I love the fact that he doesn't shy away from the darker parts of life. Let's put it that way. I really enjoy that about his writing. This one I love because it has this kind of cool Irishy fable type style story. Let's see if I can explain it well. So we we're following this little boy and girl who are recently orphaned and they are from Ireland. They are going to the British countryside, I believe, to be a part of this old manor where they are going to basically serve there. The little boy is going to be kind of a groundskeeper and help take care of the grounds. And the little girl is going to be a maid to the household. So they've kind of gotten a more or less kind of situation where they're able to be safe and at least employed and have somewhere to live since they're orphaned. But once they get there, they notice there's this strange apparition that, that only comes out at night that they end up calling the night gardener. And it's just this really creepy, <laughs> if you can see the reflection, there's this kind of really creepy man who comes in the middle of the night and he digs these holes in the yard and he's watering this giant dark tree that's kind of overtaking the house. It's actually starting to grow into the house some. It's just like this dark, creepy tree. But the thing that's so creepy about this tree is it actually grants wishes, but at a price. I'm going to just tell you that much. That's it. I really adored this story so much. It's got some creepy elements to it. It's got some whimsical elements to it. It's got this old fairy tale fable vibe. It is so good. I love it. And it's, it's just fantastic, so I highly recommend it. I think you will love this. Next is another one that ripped my heart out, but in a good way, and I loved it so much. And that is My Diary from the Edge of the World by Jodi Lynn Anderson. As you can probably guess, this book is written in a diary format. We are following this little girl um, who is traveling with her family in a Winnebago <laughs> across the country. And it's, she lives in a world that's very similar to ours, except there are some magical beings that also live in this world. As you can tell here, there's like a dragon. There are dragons in this world and some other creatures. And another thing that's different is when someone is about to die, there's an omen that comes. There is a dark cloud that will come and float over the house of someone who is going to die. It's not really sure who's gonna die necessarily in the house, but usually if you see that, you know someone is going to die soon and they are taken up into this cloud and taken away to the afterlife. 
One day, a dark cloud comes and hovers over her home, and her parents are terrified, thinking it's probably their son who's really sickly, their little brother, and so they pack up in the Winnebago and try to outrun this cloud and go on a quest to see if they can save their son. It's whimsical, it's heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time, and I really loved it. When I first started it, I had a little trouble getting into it because it felt almost kind of little kitty at first, but that's because we're following this character who at first is living more of this childlike kind of moment in her life, and you see how much she grows and how much she has to grow through this story of the fear of losing a family member and it's just it's so good <laughs> it's so good and Jodie Lynn Anderson has such creative ideas and stories to tell and this one is just beautiful and I feel like I haven't heard about it that much so I highly recommend this one and a lot of other Jodie Lynn Anderson's books as well are quite lovely so but please try this one out if you're looking for something that might hit you in the feels a little bit. This next book I'm going to share with you is pretty quirky, but it's definitely worth the read. I kind of talked about it a lot for a little bit on my channel, but I haven't brought it up in a while, so I think it's high time. And that is The Assassination of Brangwen Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelchin. As you can tell from the cover, it's pretty quirky. Uh, the story style reminds me a lot of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, to be perfectly honest. It's full of all sorts of cool looking artwork. Um, it's just beautiful. I love the artwork so much in this, but this has such a unique story to it that has a lesson to be learned. And I think it's just such an impactful story for anyone to read about. So let's see if I can explain it here. So we are following two different warring nations who have pretty much always hated each other. We've got the goblins and we have the elves always warred against each other, just really hated each other, until one day the elves decide to send an emissary to the Goblin Kingdom to give a gift to the Goblin King to hopefully make amends and see if they can bring these two kingdoms together. So this emissary goes to the Goblin Kingdom and he ends up staying with this Goblin Scholar who is extremely excited to meet this elf. He wants to be his friend so badly. He wants to learn all about the elf culture. He wants the elf culture to for the elves to learn all about goblin culture and just sort of share information and he's so excited and he tries so hard to be friends with this elf and it's precious and I love it but one of the things that I think is so interesting about the story is that the way the elf communicates back to his people so he's able to go into this trance-like state and he sends pictures with his mind to what he sees to the elves so that they're, he's able to communicate them and let them know how it's going. However, the pictures that he sends them are a little bit warped. The reason it is, let's say if you saw some kind of different culture and they're doing, say they're having this huge feast, and at this huge feast, to you, the food looks very strange, but to them, that food is traditional and they eat it all the time where it's a very special dish. But to you, you look at it and you think it looks disgusting. So you, when you send a mental picture over, instead of what you actually see, you send what you kind of perceive it as. So he would send a picture of these disgusting looking foods that just are nasty, like instead of a bowl of noodles, maybe it might translate to showing like a bowl of worms or something like that. So it's kind of how people, sometimes we will see certain different lifestyles or traditions and we see them in a different way and about kind of sharing those traditions and kind of opening our eyes to understand different people's lives and traditions and cultures. So it's a really beautiful story in that way. It's told in a very quirky humor, again, very similar to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So I highly recommend this story. I love it. I could see myself rereading it over and over. It's not only a beautiful book, but it's just so much fun and I love the characters and a great message and I think it's just a fun quirky read that I think you'll have a great time reading so I highly recommend this one as well. All right I have four more left for you so let's go ahead and get to the rest of these. This is one that I have recommended to a lot of my friends and they have adored it as well and that is Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster also by Jonathan Ossier person that wrote The Night Gardener. In this story, we are following this little girl who is an orphaned chimney sweep in Victorian London. And one day while she is sweeping a chimney, she gets stuck, which is honestly kind of a death sentence for a chimney sweep. She gets stuck in this chimney, she can't get out, 
and she thinks she's going to die. And then she ends up passing out and waking up in the attic of the home that she was trapped in. And a soot monster has saved her from, from dying in this chimney. So it goes from there they're up to their unlikely friendship and just all the things that happened afterwards. And it is the most heartwarming story. It is so beautiful. It's precious. It will make you tear up. It will make you feel so warm and fuzzy inside. And it is wonderful. And I love it. <laughs> I, what I've said before, I love John and Ozzy's books. They're so good. So I highly recommend this one too. It's just so sweet and so precious. If you like something that's heartwarming and maybe has a little bit of a historical fiction, aspect to it then I would highly recommend this and it even has some um, cultural folk tales involved as well so I highly recommend this story and if you just want something nice and warm heartwarming sorry <laughs> then please read sweet I think you will really adore it all right the next is a middle grade ghost story I love these and that is the swallow by Karis Cotter in this story we are following two girls who are neighbors they are so very different we've got one little girl who's very bookish and studious and the other one who just always she's wearing all black she has this huge hair she's always kind of like trying to hide in a corner and she's very quiet and very standoffish and she doesn't really want to make friends until they both find out they actually have something they have in common that they're interested in which is ghosts and they find out that there is a ghost that is haunting this little girl's home and they decide to work together to find out why this ghost is haunting them what is the unfinished business how can they help the ghost it is so fun. I love the fact that this story is told in dual perspective. So each chapter switches back and forth between the perspective of each of these characters. So I love that we get to get in the heads of both of these girls. And I really loved it. And it had some great mystery aspects to it, a few surprises in it as well. So I highly enjoyed this and I recommend it if you want a nice little ghost story for middle grade readers. So good. All right, a couple more. Next one is the Bone Garden by Heather Kastner. First of all, I love this cover. It is so pretty. This one I have read very recently and I really enjoyed it a lot. We are following this little girl who is actually created from bone dust. So she's not really a real person per se. She's made out of bone dust and magic. And the woman that made her, she so desperately wants this woman to love her and she does everything she can to please this woman who made her and this woman created her basically to be her slave and her servant and to do like these different tasks for her and she tries these to do as well she can with these tasks um this entire story takes place within a graveyard so if you like kind of a spooky feels this one is definitely a, a great atmosphere for that and I don't really want to say much else than that because I don't want to reveal too much in this story. But I really enjoyed it a lot. I really felt the the difficulties this, this character we're following was going through. And I loved kind of the atmosphere of the story and the mystery style of the story as well. I just thought it was great. There wasn't a lot of info dumping or story, uh, sorry, not story, world building in this, which I actually really liked. You kind of had to figure it out as you went but in a good way. Like it was really enjoyable. This is one I feel like I haven't really heard of much at all. So I would like to see more people try it out because it was actually a really good read and a really quick one as well. All right, I've got one more for you and this is another kind of heavy hitting one, but very whimsical. And that is The Land of Yesterday by K.A. Reynolds. This one is extremely similar to me. It's like a mashup of Alice in Wonderland and Coraline. It's got this dark, creepy aspect to it, but extremely whimsical just like Alice in Wonderland we are following this girl here that first of all has hair lots of hair and the hair can do things like it can grab stuff it makes me think of like Tangled <laughs> where she'd like wrap around and grab things with her hair so she sort of has like this hair that has a mind of its own which is adorable but we're following this girl and her family and recently her little brother has tragically passed away and her family is starting to fall apart because of it her parents are just swallowed up in grief and she feels like her family is falling apart and in this world when someone dies their soul goes to the land of yesterday and her mother is so distraught that she ends up trying to travel into the land of yesterday to get to her son and this girl ends up actually deciding to try to follow her mother and rescue her from the land of yesterday and try to see 
if she can pull her family back together. It's very heartwarming. I love the fact that this tackles the subject of grief head on and all the different kind of emotions you go through in grief. Uh, it's, it's a very heavy topic, but it's very whimsically written to where you are facing this grief head on. However, it's also told in a way that is very whimsical and beautiful. And I, I just highly recommend it a lot. I think it's just a gorgeous style of writing. I think the topic that it tackles is such a difficult topic to kind of face, but also make it in a way where you're able to handle reading it, if that makes sense. So if you're a fan of kind of like a whimsical style of Alice in Wonderland and kind of the dark feels of Coraline as well, then I think you will really love this. So this is another great standalone as well. All right, everybody. So those are 11 different middle grade standalone recommendations for you today. I hope that you are able to try some of these out. Let me know down below if there's any of these that you are excited to maybe read and you're added to your TBR, if some of these you've have read before. Also, if you have any middle grade recommendations for me, for me specifically that are standalones, please put them down below because I'm always looking for more fantastic middle grades to read. On this side of the video over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on my book journey. On this side of the video over here is a suggestion for another video if you want to watch another one right now. But thank you so much for watching. You rock and don't forget to keep reading. Bye!